Good morning, everybody. I know some of you are still wandering in, but uh, we did want to get started on time. We have a packed a packed agenda. Um, for those of you I don't know, my, uh, you don't. <laughs> for those of you I don't know, my name is Raphael Heller. I'm with Jobs for the Future, and we are co-hosting this event with Learning Policy Institute. I just would like to say a few very quick words of welcome and then, and then step out of the way. Um, first, uh, just a thank you to Learning Policy Institute, to uh, Shawnee, to Charmaine, to Livia, to Wynn in the California office. Um, we are co-hosting this event, but they did a very large share of the work and very effectively, so thanks, you guys are terrific. Um, secondly, just a couple of words about the papers that we'll be discussing today, a little background. So about two years ago, um, the Flora, uh, William and Flora Hewlett Foundation asked Jobs for the Future to produce a series of white papers on what they call deeper learning. And the name, the brand name isn't so important. The, the important issue is that there is a ton of research in recent years showing that while academics is absolutely critical, it is not enough for kids to succeed in college and careers and the rest of their lives. In addition to high level uh, academic work, kids need some combination of skills, variously called deeper learning, soft skills, employability skills. Um, some people still use the term non-cognitive skills, although nobody particularly likes it. Um, Dave Conley recently recommended we call it them success skills, but that hasn't caught on yet. Um, the important thing is that uh, if it's true that these things matter very much, um, we need to try to figure out what the implications are for secondary schools especially. So we've commissioned a series of papers, and I, I hope you look at all of them, asking what the implications are for assessment, for the use of technology in schools, for um, civic education, for career education, for how we, uh, how we think about teaching and teacher education. Um, we don't have the answers. Our job is to, to ask smart people to review the research for us to begin to think about some policy recommendations. Which brings us to the papers today. The two latest papers in the series are both related very much, uh, very closely to equity issues. Basically, the question is, again, if it's true that Yes, academics are central, are critically important, but so are other skills, interpersonal, intrapersonal, whatever you call them. Um, what, are the, what are the equity implications? What will it take to make sure that all children have access to what we call deeper learning? What will it take to ensure that students who are immigrants or English language learners have those opportunities? So that's where we are. That's, th that, that's what brings us here today, and that's what brought us to the papers in your packets. Um, with that, my three minutes are up. I want to let uh, our speakers begin. Uh, in a minute, we'll hand the mic over to Sarah Sparks from Education Week, who'll be moderating for us. Uh, she's assistant editor at, at Ed Week. Um, she also, if you followed her work, uh, seems to know more about education research than most education researchers do. Uh, Patricia Gandra, just in from the Civil Rights Project at UCLA. Um, and uh, let me hand the mic over to Linda Darling-Hammond, um, who I believe used to work at Stanford or somewhere, but is now the CEO and <laughs> president of the brand new Learning Policy Institute. Well, I just want to reassure anybody who might be listening in from Stanford that I am still teaching there, and I will be back on Monday to teach adolescent development to my student teachers. So. Um, I am splitting my time, but I am um, glad to uh, welcome you on behalf of the Learning Policy Institute. Um, we call ourselves uh, the Learning Policy Institute because our focus is on research and policy that support learning and the kind of learning that is empowering and equitable for all young people. Not all policy attends to learning, uh, and in fact, we think that has to become the focus of all our efforts because the kind of learning that Raphael described has implications for the nature of teaching, for the nature of school organizations, for what school systems do, and for what policies have to do to help us become ready for the century we are already in uh, but are not yet actually fully ready for. As somebody once said, the future is here, it's just not equitably distributed. 
Uh, and so um, I, I do want to add my thanks to the staff, uh, Charmaine, Livia, Shanice, and others who uh, made this possible, all the staff in our Washington office.